Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Here we are again. Let's see. First grade, what was the play? Grim Children. Grim Children. Second grade. Snuck in the second one. Uh, yeah, the King of Ireland set up the end in the classroom. Little Third grade. <laughs> Esther, Queen of Persia. <laughs> Fourth grade. Baller <laughs> Fate. Yeah. Ball the the Ball face of Baller, right? Ball 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 Fifth grade. Uh, what? Uh, Fifth grade. Is it Rome? I think it's Cyrus. Shakespeare production. Enjoy. Gave doubtful warrant of immediate death. 
The sailors sought for safety by our boat and left our ship, then seeming right to us. My wife, more careful for the latter born, had fastened him unto a small spare mast, such as seafaring men provide for storms. To him, one of the other twins was bound, whilst like I been like heedful of the other. The children thus exposed. My wife and I, fixing our eyes on whom our care was fixed, fastened ourselves to either end of the mast. Nay, Ford, old man, do not break off so, for we may pity, though not pardon thee. We were encountered by a mighty rock, which being violently borne upon, our helpful ship was split in the midst. Her part, poor soul, was carried with more speed before the wind. My youngest boy, and yet my <laughs> eldest man, at 18 years became inquisitive, after his brother, but retained his name might bear him company in the quest of him, whom whilst I labored of love to see, I hazard the loss of whom I love. Thus have you heard me severed from my bliss, and happy were in my time of death, could all my travels warp me they live. Hapless to you, to whom the fates have marked, to bear the extremity of dire mishap, but though thou art a judge to the death, yet I will favor thee in what I can. Therefore, merchant, I limit thee this day, beg thou, or borrow, to make up the sum, and live. If no, then thou art doomed to die. Jailer, take him to thy custody. I will, my lord. Hopeless and helpless doth the Jean wed, but to procrastinate his lifeless end. All the world's a stage, and all men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Yes. And what a stage it is. Before we continue on our story, there are some important details you need to understand. First of all, there are two sets of identical twins in the story. <laughs> That's right, two sets of identical <laughs> twins, separated as babies in a shipwreck. Antipolis of Syracuse, this guy here, and his adopted brother, Dromeo of Syracuse, this guy here, <laughs> boom, were raised by their dad. They live in Syracuse. Say it with me. Go Syracuse. And Tiflis of Ephesus, this guy here, and Dromeo of Ephesus, this guy over here, <laughs> were raised in Ephesus. Say it with me. <laughs> Ephesus. Perfect. One pair from that broken ship who died in the land of Syracuse with the father, while the others to Ephesus. Isn't that sad? The father missed the other twins so much that he named his twins after the missing ones. So now we have two Dromeos, who are twins, and two Antipoli, also twins. That's so creative, right? <laughs> now you're giving it two sets of twins with the same name growing up in different towns, never knowing about each other. Until one day, Aegean spilled the tea and told his sons about their long-lost twin brothers. <laughs> when Antipolis and Romeo of Syracuse turned 18, they decided it was time to go and search for their missing brothers. Road trip! But after being gone for seven years, their father Aegean became so worried about him that, that he set off to find them. Aegean ends up in Ephesus, where they don't like people from Syracuse and won't let them in. Sounds familiar? It's <laughs> fact. Aegean is arrested. He must either pay a fine or be put to death. I'm pretty sure that brings us up to speed. Two sets of identical twins in the same town. Nobody knows that the others are there, nor do the friends, townspeople, wives, or girlfriends. What could possibly go wrong?
soon to be confiscated. This very day, a Syracusean merchant dies very, very sunset in the west. Here is your money that I had to keep. Go bear it to the centaur, where we host, and stay there, Dromeo, till I come to thee. Within this hour it'll be dinner time. Until then, I'll view the manners of the town, peruse the traders, gaze upon the buildings, and then return and sleep within my inn. For with long travel, I am stiff and weary. Get thee away. Many a man would take you at your word, and go indeed, having so good a mean. Boom. A trusty villain, sir, that very oft, when I'm dull with care and melancholy, lightens my humor with his merry jest. What, would you walk about the town with me, and then go to my inn and dine with me? I am invited, sir, to certain merchants, of whom I have to make much benefit. I crave your pardon. Soon at five o'clock, please you. I'll meet you upon the mark, and afterwards, consort yourself bedtime. My present business calls me from you now. He that commends me to my own content, commends me to the thing I cannot give. I, to the world, am like a drop of water that in the ocean seeks another drop, who, falling there to find his fellow forth, unseen, inquisitive, confounds himself. So I, to find a mother and a brother, in quest of them, unhappy, lose myself. Here comes the almanac of my true day. What now? How chance thou art returned so soon? Returned so soon? Rather approach too late. Oh. Stop in your wind, sir. Tell me this, I pray you. Where have you left the money that I just gave you? Where is the gold that I gave charge to you? To me, sir? Why, you gave no gold to me. Ah, oh, come on, sir, knave. Have done your foolishness. And tell me how thou hast disposed of thy charge. My charge was but to fetch you from the mark. Home to our house, the phoenix, sir, to dinner. My mistress and her sister stays for you. In what safe place have you bestowed my money? Or I shall break that very sconce of yours and stand on tricks that I'm undisposed. Where is the thousand marks thou hadst of me? What? Will thou, will thou be thus unto my face, being forbid? There, take you that, sir, nay. What mean you, sir? For God's sake, hold your hands. Nay, and you will not, sir. I'll take my heels. By some device or another, this villain is a raw of all my might. They say this town is full of cosinage. <laughs> As nimble jugglers that deceive the eye, dark working sorcerers that change the mind, <laughs> soul killing witches that deform the body. I'll go to the centaur to seek Dromeo. I greatly fear my money is not safe. <laughs> Neither my husband nor Dromeo returned, that in such haste I said to seek his master. Perhaps a merchant hath invited him, and from the bar he's somewhere gone to dinner. Good sister, let us dine and never fret. A man is master of his liberty. Time is their master, and when they see time, they'll go or come. If so, be patient, sister. Why should their liberty than ours be more? Oh no, he is the bridle of your will. There's not but donkeys will be bridled, so. The servitude makes you to keep unwed. Well, I'll marry one day, but to try. Here comes your man. Now is your husband nigh. Say, is your tardy master now at hand? Nay, he's at two hands with me, and that my two ears can witness. Say, didst thou speak with him? Knowest thou his mind? Aye, aye, he told his mind upon my ear. But sure, he is stark mad. When I desired him to come home to dinner, he asked me for a thousand marks in gold. Tis dinner time, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. The meat doth burn, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. Will you come home, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. Where is the thousand marks I gave thee, villain? The pig, quoth I, tis burned. My gold, quoth I. My mistress, sir, quoth I. Hang up thy mistress. I know not thy mistress. I know not thy mistress. <laughs> Mistress, go back again, Dromeo, and fetch him home. Fie, how impatient he roars at your face. Since that my beauty cannot please his eye, I'll weep what's left away, and weeping die. Self-harming jealousy, fie, be it hence. How many fond fools serve bad jealousy? Romeo is 
is laid up safe at the centaur. I could not speak with Dromeo since at first I sent him from the mart. See, here he comes. How now, sir? Is your merry humor altered? You know no centaur, you receive no gold. Your mistress <laughs> sent to have me home to dinner. I did not see you since you sent me hence, home to the centaur, with the gold you gave me. Thinkest thou I jest? Hold, take thou that. I, I am Tiflis. Look strange and frown. Some other mistress hath thy sweet aspects. I am not Adriana, nor thy wife. Ah, do not tear away thyself from me. For no, my love, as easy mayest thou fall a drop of water in the breaking gulf, and take unmingled that same drop again, without addition or diminishings, as take from me thyself and not me too. How dearly would it touch me to the quick? Shouldest thou but hear I were licentious? Wouldst thou not spit at me and spurn at me, and hurl the name of husband in my face, and from my false hand cut the wedding ring, and break it with a deep divorcing vow? <laughs> Leave you to me, fair dame? I know you not. In Ephesus I'm but two hours old, as strange unto your tongue as to your talk. Fine, brother, how the world has changed with you. When were you wont to use my sister thus? She sent for you by Dromeo home to dinner. By Dromeo? By me? By me. How can she thus call us by our names unless it be by inspiration? How ill agrees it with your gravity to counterfeit this grossy with your Dromeo, abetting him to thwart me in my mood? Come, I will fasten on the sleeve of thine. Thou art an L, my husband, I am mine. To me <laughs> she speaks, she moves me for her theme. What was I married to her in some dream? Until I know the sure uncertainty, I'll entertain the awkward fallacy. Tropio, go in and serve us for dinner. This is the fairyland, O oh, spite of spite. We talk with goblins, owls, and sprites. If we obey them not, this will ensue. They'll suck our breath or pinch us black and blue. Come, come. No longer will I be a fool to put the finger in the eye and weep. Husband, I will dine above with you today and shrive you a thousand idle pranks. Come, sister. Dromeo, play the quarter well. Am I in earth? In heaven or in hell? <laughs> Sleeping or waking? Mad or well advised? Known unto these and to myself disguised. I'll say as they say and persevere so, and in the midst of all adventures go. Brother, shall I be quarter at the gate? Aye, and let none enter lest I break your pace. Come, come, Antiphilus, we dine too late. <laughs> Wherefore? 
Wherefore, for my dinner, I have not dined today. Nor today, here you must not. Come again when you may. What art thou that keep 